This is the Emergency Medical Minute. All right. So like I was saying, so yeah, so patients who are already intubated can have symptoms where they are dyspneic. And sometimes we have patients who are somewhat awake and they're kind of gesturing that they're having a hard time breathing. And, you know, so there's things that we can do to address that. And this was an interesting article that talked about it. And apparently dyspnea can occur in up to 50 percent of intubated patients. And it has associated with uh, kind of prolonged mechanical ventilation, besides the fact that it's probably not fun for a patient to feel that way while they're intubated. So um, the things that we can do, um, first thing is reducing what they call non-respiratory stimuli of the respiratory drive. So for example, if you have a fever, you feel like you need to, the body breathes faster. If you're acidotic or anemic, your body's going to want to breathe faster. So we can kind of deal with those things that are just kind of underlying issues. Um, they want to also recommend um, things like bronchodilators in case the patient is wheezing, that can help. Um, and then optimizing ventilator settings. So things like um, increasing the flow rate. So that's things that RT, RT can do. And then the last thing is uh, sometimes just using medications like opioid or benzos, which goes along with the general idea of keeping uh, intubated patients comfortable. So interesting idea that about half the patients who are on a vent can actually feel very short of breath. And there's a couple things that we can do to manage that and not just say, oh, they're on a vent. It's totally fine. So any questions or comments? All right. Thanks, guys. Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.